Okay, I'm good. I just had to get that out of my system. Oh, man. This has been a hectic couple of weeks. Thank you for bearing with me here. It feels like I have not filmed a regular video in like a week, which is appropriate because I really haven't filmed a regular video in about a week. Um, the last video I actually filmed was the Hiori one that I filmed last Friday before I went to Teco. And then I went to Teco for a few days, had a great time, met Daniel Rustage. He performed with Mega Ran. I did my panel. A lot of people showed up. It was great. Uh, then he came back and stayed here for a couple of days. Uh, we played a lot of Magic the Gathering. So I'm getting back in the match of the gathering now, but we filmed a few videos together well one video together So that came out and uh, did a bunch of other stuff. So finally trying to get back to normal here A um, couple of housekeeping things before we get into the video and I'll put like a timestamp down below to get to the actual content uh, But one thing I definitely wanted to say now is we're doing the st. Jude charity stream tomorrow Saturday December 18th 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, I'm usually way more on top of that and I apologize because I usually like you know uh, get a bunch of other youtubers I send them messages to make videos for it and I plan everything out and I make a video to like announce that I'm gonna be doing it like a week before but with everything going on I, I was honestly wondering if I should even do it this year but I decided you know what no we did really good with the charity stream last year I do it every year so let's keep the tradition going around Christmas time last year we raised about seventeen thousand dollars for st. Jude so I said you know what let's go even higher this year let's get to twenty thousand dollars plus for st. Jude Children's Hospital Hospital. I think we can do it. Do you think we can? Because I think we can, all right? So that'll be tomorrow. That'll be Saturday. And then the week after that is going to be Christmas. And the week after that, I'm actually going to a wedding. So there's there's a lot of stuff going on right now. But let's just try for right now to get back to the normal events. Uh, there will be a chapter review of One Piece on Sunday as well. And I don't know if there'll be another chapter after this one in uh, 2021. I, I don't know if they'll, it'll come out early or what. We'll have to see how that goes. Usually around Christmas, we do usually get a chapter that comes out like either right before Christmas or right after Christmas. It's usually an early chapter and then it'll go on break for a little while for a couple of weeks into like mid January is usually when it picks back up. But um, all right. Well, that's that's everything I just wanted to mention as an announcement. Oh, by the way, got a new microphone because while Rustage was here, I was like, all right, Rustage, look, I have a lot of problems with my microphones and stuff. You know, it just seems like I think you guys might have noticed it. Sometimes the audio just cuts out. Sometimes it's just there's an echo effect or like a digital weird like robot effect so I'm like I literally just like okay what do I need to make myself not sound like shit and he was like all right you need this this and this and this I got this microphone I don't even know what it's called it's actually wait hold on I think I have a yeah it's like this it's a shure microphone shure sure I got a cloud lifter I got this thing that I plug it into I got the right cables I don't know I should be sounding okay right now all right and the thing with my videos is that sometimes I'll just be like hey everybody how are you doing and then I'll scream like oh my god ace is so cool right so I need a microphone that can properly handle my level of excitement so this this should be the good one this should be the right one right here so let's see how this goes all right um, anyway getting into the actual plot of the video uh, a couple days ago when I made that video with the crack ships with rustage I mentioned in there I'm like you know I should do a video on what if Ace actually stuck around with the Straw Hats longer all throughout Alabasta and even beyond Alabasta because the kicker is Ace did not run into Blackbeard until after Eni's lobby he ran into Blackbeard at uh, Bonaro Island where they had their big epic battle and of course Blackbeard won and then he threw you know Ace into Impel Down or he gave him over to the Marines and he threw him into Ape Impel Down and then that's how Blackbeard became a warlord and that kind of set up his whole plan to gain access to Impel Down down to free all the level six prisoners and eventually go to Marine Ford and kill Whitebeard and get his uh, Guru Guru Nomi. All right, so that was like like the first step of everything that went down. Uh, but the funny thing is that if Ace would have actually stayed with the Straw Hat crew, he would have ran into Blackbeard a lot earlier than he would have in the actual story, right? Because right after Alabasta, barring the filler arcs like the Goat Island arc and the Rainbow Mist arc, remember the Rainbow Mist arc? The Rainbow Mist arc actually actually wasn't that great. I was going to say it actually wasn't that bad. It's like, ah, they're even in filler arcs in One Piece, there were better ones, right? But anyway, um, right after Alabasta, though, in the manga, they go to Jaya. They end up in Jaya, and who's in Jaya? Literally, uh, Blackbeard and his crew are in Mock Town when Luffy and his crew arrive, like the first place they go in Jaya, okay? So if Ace would have just pout around with them for a couple of weeks, he would have ran into Blackbeard way earlier. And actually, that makes you wonder, like, okay... 
I mean, the Straw Hats were obviously a lot weaker back then, but also were the Blackbeard Pirates. You know, Blackbeard didn't have, well, he had the Yami Yami Nomi at that point, but he didn't have the Guru Guru Nomi, and his crew wasn't that strong. So it would have been actually very interesting to see Ace and Blackbeard fight at Jaya, and if, like, the Straw Hats were to help him out, like, how would that have went? Like, okay. So the first thing I want to address, though, is a discrepancy that exists between Ace's presence in Alabasta in the manga versus the anime, and I think a lot of people are aware of this. Ace spent a lot more time with the Straw Hats in the anime than he did in the manga, and I'm actually really happy the anime did that, because Ace is a really cool character, and we got to see more from him in the anime. It was really nice. Also, considering what happened later to him, you know, he, he kind of died Died. So it was kind of nice to see more of him while we had the chance because obviously the, the anime staff did not know he was going to die later. But in hindsight, it was cool that we got more Ace back then than in the manga, right? So the story with Ace is that, of course, he's the second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. Blackbeard was his subordinate. Blackbeard killed Thatch, took the Yami Yami Nomi, and jumped ship, okay? And so Ace felt like it was his responsibility as the commander of the second division to bring Teach back to Whitebeard's ship, the Moby Dick, and uh, be brought to justice, okay? Of course. So, uh, Ace's first appearance is actually in Drum Island, remember, when, uh, after Blackbeard attacked the island, there was that rumor, you know, Blackbeard was on this island, that was the reason Wapple left and everything, he was a coward, and so Ace heard about that, and he actually arrived at Drum Island before the Straw Hats did, before they had their adventure on Drum Island, fighting against Wapple and meeting Dr. Kareha and Chopper and everybody, so Ace was at the island, he was in, I think, a place called Robel Town, and he just kind of showed up, and he's like, is Blackbeard here? And they're like, oh, no, he left, and Ace is like, ah, okay, well, whatever. Hey, I'm gonna head to Alabasta next, and if a pirate with a straw hat happens to come through these parts, uh, let him know that Ace is going to be at Nanohana for 10 days, and I'll be waiting for him, okay? Now, unfortunately, this message does not actually reach Luffy and the crew, uh, because the people that Ace told just forgot about it, right? He just told some random civilians that were hanging out, like, hey, if you happen to see this pirate, let him know, and so after the events of Drum Island were over, after the straw hats recruited Chopper, and they, and they sailed away, um, um, these men approached Dalton, and they were like, Oh, hey, Dalton, are the Straw Hats still here? I'm like, no, they left like three hours ago. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Well, there was this guy, he wore a really cool black, like, blazer and a hat, and he can apparently manipulate heat, and he also skipped out on his food bill, but he told him that he was going to be in Alabasta for ten days, so if that's relevant. And so there was no way for Dalton or anybody to contact Luffy, so they are like, alright, well, I guess if it's a big deal, I guess they'll run into him, right? So Luffy and the crew arrive at Alabasta, they arrive at the port town, of Nanohana, and that's where Luffy runs into Ace in the restaurant, also Smoker's there, we have the really cool fight with Ace fighting Smoker, and that was really cool because at that point in the story, Logios were essentially nigh invincible there was no established way, and that was why Crocodile was so terrifying as well there was no established way to like effectively defeat a Logia, because when Smoker first showed up at Logtown, it was just like alright, he can turn into Smoke, like how's Luffy gonna fight him, he literally cannot punch him he can't grab him, he can't do anything, but Smoker can pummel the crap out of Luffy, right? So the idea was, like, Logias are invincible, hockey hadn't been introduced yet, and their weaknesses hadn't been introduced yet, right? So then you have Ace, who's also a Logia, fighting with Smoker, and it, it kind of implied that, like, oh, is the only way that you can defeat a Logia with another Logia? Like, that was something that might have been the, the, uh, the thought process at the time. I wasn't reading One Piece Weekly at that point, but it would have been interesting, right? So Ace fought against Smoker, and he actually says, you know, we're actually very evenly matched because you control smoke, I control fire, we won't be able to settle this fight quickly, you know, this will have to be a, like a long out duel, I feel like Ace would eventually win, he would eventually defeat Smoker, um, but just because of their matchups and their abilities, it would have been like a, a, an exercise of futility or an exercise of a, just endurance and stamina at some point, right? Well anyway, in the manga, Ace pretty much leaves right after that, he does not travel with the Straw Hats into the desert or any further into Alabasta, um, he basically just shows up, I guess, looking for Blackbeard, actually, you know what, it's implied that he might have not even have been in Alabasta because he heard Blackbeard was there. It was the idea that maybe he just like knew Luffy was going to be coming there soon, and so he's like, I'll take a break for looking to Bla looking for Blackbeard to see my little brother for just a couple of uh, hours or whatever. I, I think that's more of the implication in the manga. Um, because after he runs into Luffy, and after they run through the town a little bit, the Straw Hats get back to the Going Merry, and they're ready to sail away into like the further into Alabasta. Ace is like, alright, well, I gotta get going. I have a 
asked to do. And even I, I reread the scene just now, and Sanji was like, "Hey, man, can't you just hang out here for a little while? I can make some tea. We can have a, like you can chat. You haven't seen your little brother in years." And so Ace is like, "You know, I'd love to. I really would, but I have a task to do. I'm on kind of on the clock right now. I have to find Blackbeard." And he told them the whole story about you know killing Thatch and everything like that. He doesn't use names, but he mentions it. So, right there at that point, Ace uh, tosses Luffy the Vivra card. He doesn't know it's a Vivra card yet, but he tosses him the Vivra card. He's like, keep a, uh, keep a hand on that because that'll allow us to meet again one day and I'll let you know how I'm doing and everything like that. And then Ace jumps on the striker, sails away, but not before using his he can to completely annihilate um, the millions fleet that was gathered outside of Nanohana to try to trap the Straw Hats, okay? So he completely annihilates several ships. I think it was like 50 ships with one attack. We got to see just how powerful just how strong oh no ace's hat we got to see just how powerful a member of a uh, we didn't know they were yonko yet but a member of one of the strongest crews in the world whitebeard's crew was and how legendary fire fist ace was and how powerful logia users were at that moment so after completely just nuking the millions fleet ace just gets back on the striker and he just sails away into the distance and then that's it we don't get any more from ace during alabasta okay now in the anime we do continue on a little bit and i gotta be 100 percent serious with you guys I actually have never sat down and watched those filler episodes. There were like four, maybe five. Some of the episodes were like half filler, half canon. Um, those episodes where they're traveling through the desert, where they go, I think they go to Aramalu first, and Aramalu was like a deserted town that was completely wiped out by a sandstorm, and then they trek through the desert to get to Yuba, and of course at Yuba that's where they meet Toto, and they get, Luffy gets the water and everything like that. So in that space, while they're traveling through the desert, we get a lot more with Ace. Ace is just like, hey, uh, mind if I pal around with you guys for a little while? We later find out the reason why the anime gives for Ace travel traveling with them is that the story was that there was a bounty hunter that lived somewhere in Yuba or around Yuba by the name of Scorpion and he was spreading the rumor around that he had defeated Blackbeard. And so Ace got wind of that, and he's like, okay, it's probably nothing, he's probably just like bluster, but I at least gotta check it out, because that's what Ace is out there to do. He has to check every rumor to see where Teach could be, right? So he's like, alright, alright, this guy's apparently living in like the deserts of Alabasta by Yuba, alright, I'll travel with you guys for a little while longer to see if I can find this scorpion dude. So we trek through the desert, and like I said, there's a few filler arcs, there's the one filler arcs where we run into the, uh, the sand pirates, because, of course, they're sand pirates. It's One Piece. They're sand pirates. Sand pirates are canon. Why not, right? So they run into the sand pirates led by Barbarossa, which is an epic name, and also Rasa, who Rasa is pretty high-ranking on the filler character waifu list, I have to say right there. She's got the little umbrella in her hair. It's pretty adorable. Anyway, so they run into the sand pirates. There's, like, an episode with them. There's an episode where they run into, like, fake members of, like, the revolutionaries. Like, they're, like, pretending to be revolutionaries, but they're not really, uh, not revolutionaries like Dragon, revolutionaries led by Koza, you know, from Alabasta, right? Uh, but then finally, episode 101 is where we get the moment where Ace runs into Scorpion, the guy that purportedly defeated Blackbeard. This is also the episode where Ace realizes that Blackbeard's not really in this country right now, and it was a lie, and that's the episode where Ace gives him the Vivra card, and he leaves Alabasta. I would recommend, and I'm being serious here, I would recommend if you have not watched that episode purely because it was filler and who cares, go back and watch that. Episode 101, how appropriate, of One Piece. It's actually a really good episode, okay? Not just for the fact of the characters, the music in the episode itself is very unique. There's like Spanish guitar music playing in the background, and it just, it works. It's very exciting. So the idea goes that this guy right here, his name is Scorpion, okay? And he was just like, uh, he used to be a bounty hunter, but then he had his kids, and I guess his wife died. We don't really learn anything about her, but he had his two kids, Chip and Dip. And so he gave up being a bounty hunter so he can raise his children children, and they were living out in the badlands of Alabasta, okay, and so they were trying to grow crops out there, and they couldn't really grow much, but they had just enough to get by, and so it was just a story of, like, a dad trying to raise his two sons, um, but there's not enough food to go around, so the dad usually goes hungry while his kids are fed. It's, it's a very heartwarming story, I have to say, and so one night, 
Um, he hears his kids talking about how, like, oh, well, you know, it'd be nice to get out there and adventure, but we have to stay here, and we have to help Dad, and we have to help with the farm. And Scorpion overhears this, and so he's like, oh, kids, you know, I don't want you to stay on this crappy farm for the rest of your lives. I want you to go out there and have adventures like your old man did. In fact... I'm going to defeat the greatest pirate ever. I'm going to find Porcus D. Firefist Ace, and I'm going to defeat him, right? Okay? And so, Scorpion, that's the reason he lied. So he went around lying that he had defeated Blackbeard, because I guess he heard that Ace was looking for Blackbeard. And so, okay, if I spread the rumor that Blackbeard was defeated by me, then Ace is going to come find me. And so, sure enough, he actually does, all right? And so Scorpion's like, all right... I'm way out of my depth here. There's probably no way that I'm going to physically be able to defeat Fire Fist Ace. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try for my kid's sake. And I'm going to be, uh, hopefully I'm going to win. And then I'm going to be able to get his bounty. And then I can give my kids a good life. And so, so it's a really nice message at the end of the day when you realize that he's just a single parent that's trying to make a better life for his sons and wants his sons to like look up to him as like a strong like father and just like I'm a bounty hunter I'm really awesome and kind of stuff right so anyway um, and like I said the soundtracks in the episode are great there's a scene where Luffy runs into Scorpion first in the desert and he's like riding like an ostrich and so um, you know Scorpion is like he meets Luffy and he doesn't really know who Luffy is but he's just like alright hop on my ostrich I'm gonna go look for Fire Fist Ace and defeat him you know and he's like you know I've defeated Double Barrel Dan and Hell Battler Luther, all these famous pirates in the world. I've defeated all of them. I'm the great bounty hunter Scorpion, and now I'm going to take on Fire Fist Ace. And Luffy's response to hearing that was like, Oh, you're going to fight Ace, old man? I got to see this. You know, so it's very, every, everybody's really in character. That's how you know you have a good filler episode or a good filler arc, by the way, when the characters are still written in character okay that's what i really like okay so at this point in the story when this old man is just like i want to fight porcus d ace and luffy his brother is like oh man that'd be cool it would be awesome to see ace fight you <laughs> you know see where this goes right so anyway they eventually do meet um, they meet, and Ace is kind of dubious himself, because he saw a picture, they run into Chip and Dip, and he sees a picture of Scorpion, and Ace is just like, I don't know if this random farmer defeated Blackbeard, I, I'm a little bit dubious, a little bit skeptical on that, right? And so, um, eventually Scorpion shows up, and he's like, you know, you're Fire Fist Ace, I've come to fight you, I want this to be a fair fight, and we go all out, is that agreed? And he's obviously very scared, he's just like, okay... <laughs> Time to put my money where my mouth is. Time to write that check. I've told my kids for the last six weeks I was going to fight Fire Fist Ace, second commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. Here he is. Through some crazy happen chance, he actually ended up in the middle of nowhere in Alabasta. Here we go. But the thing is... Scorpion actually kind of planned ahead for this fight. So he's like, I don't know if he knew about Logias or if he knew that Ace had a Logia. He just knew that, like, Ace controlled fire or whatever. So his first method was using a net gun. That works about as well as you would figure. But his second method to fight Ace was actually very clever. He used a modified fire extinguisher, which, don't laugh because, well, okay, actually, I think there's a translation thing here where in one, I think in the original Japanese, it was actually mentioned to be like an acid cannon. Uh, but in other translations, it was mentioned to be fire extinguisher, like a, a specialized hyper-compressed fire extinguisher foam, where it fires off with such intense pressure, it can literally break rock and whatever. Either way, that's not a bad way when you're going up against a Logia using like unconventional weapons. At the very least, Scorpion realized like, I can't use a regular gun against Ace. I got to be a little clever here so he used a net gun all right that didn't work i can try to trap him but that didn't work i'm gonna use like fire extinguisher foam or acid to try to hurt him and just like the fire extinguisher idea is actually not a bad idea it doesn't work because ace is just way too fast and he just like one punches scorpion and scorpion's just a regular dude so he just punches scorpion once and he goes down but like the idea that he got that like okay he's fire fist ace i'm just gonna douse him with like fire extinguisher foam I mean, it might work. I mean, like, okay, even if that worked, like, even if he doused Ace with that shit and he couldn't turn into fire, Ace would still be physically strong enough, and he knows hockey, that he could, like, beat up anybody, but, like, 
That's not a bad idea. I'm just saying. Anyway, that's the episode. That's the filler episode. So after that, and after they realize that Scorpion didn't really defeat Blackbeard, he was just lying. Um, Ace gives Luffy the Beaver card, and then he he skips out. But let's say let's say he stayed. All right. So that's where we get to this part in the video. Okay. We're like 20 minutes in, but we're finally getting to this point. Okay. What if Ace stayed with them? All right. So after this moment, they get to Yuba. All right. So they arrive in Yuba, and there's probably nothing really too different with that scene. Uh, they arrive in Yuba. Ace um, is there, probably just in the background. Really, the focus is Vivi meeting Toto, and we learn more about Koza. And then uh, Toto digs up the Yuba water and gives it to Luffy. Okay, so that scene would probably be the same. The next thing they do is go to Rain Base, and this is where things are going to get fun because this is their first interaction with Crocodile, all right? So, um,. I guess you could just argue at any given time Ace could just turn into fire and just, like, nuke the entire casino. I guess you could say that, but let's just assume he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't just kill harmless civilians. So, let's say they, you know, Ace goes into the uh, casino just like with Luffy and he ends up getting captured the same as them, okay? Now... Imagine that. So they all get caught in that giant cage that's lined with sea prism stone so they couldn't escape. And uh, Smoker was in there too, and he was a Logia, and he could not escape. So it's funny to think this, but if Ace ended up in that same trap, which Smoker ended up there, and he's an accomplished uh, Marine, and he's also a Logia user, and Smoker has the ability to fly, and he still got captured by that cage. So if he got captured, I think it's possible that Ace could have gotten captured too, and then they're just all stuck in the cage. Like, Ace would not be able to leave either, okay? So if that's the situation, they were actually probably, I mean, Ace would have probably been a lot more calm in the situation, where the Straw Hats, like Usopp, and everybody would be freaking out. Like, what are we gonna to do it's filling up with water oh my god there's a giant banana gator you know i think ace would have been a lot more chill with it um i guess you could maybe mention that like ace could have fired some like like fire pistols like through the bars and maybe attacked the uh the the uh, banana wani like the giant gator you know because smoker doesn't really have that ability to like fire projectiles but ace does he can fire like fire uh bullets and shit so, so maybe he could have done something like that or maybe actually here's a question for you hmm so the entire cage was not made out of sea prism. It was lined with sea prism, right? So this, the cage itself was still, like, made out of steel or iron or whatever. It just had sea prism. What if Ace did not come into physical contact with the cage, but rather he made, like, a blowtorch, you know, just like... Pfft! like blowtorch with his finger and then just like the fire was like hitting the bars and he melted the bars with that that i think actually might have worked because if, if as long as he's not physically touching it he's not weakened and so we saw that as long as the straw hats were in the cage and didn't touch the bars they were all right so i think ace might have been able to use a method of like his fire powers in order to melt the cage and get out so in that case they might not have needed uh sanji to show up and defeat the banana wani and mr three to come out and make the wax key or anything like that they might have been able to get out on their own all right but i still think ace would have gotten captured just the same now that's not that big of a deal but what is a big deal is moving on now to the first fight that luffy has with crocodile and this is the big question would ace have helped luffy out and you know what i don't think he would have i don't think he would have because ace knows luffy better than all of the other straw hats and so there's the moment where they're on the back of scissors that crab and so uh crocodile uses his hook and he grabs luffy and he pulls him down and luffy's like you know you guys go to alubarna i'll meet you there and he lands and then luffy starts fighting crocodile there might be a moment where ace thinks about going to help him maybe ace says like you know luffy do you need some help and luffy's like no ace i got this don't worry i can beat him and it might have been a situation where Ace could have... Maybe Ace could have given him more information about Logias. It'd be like, okay, but Luffy, you have to understand. I want you to imagine that man, Crocodile, just like me. He's got the same kind of fruit I do. So you got to think outside the box with this. All right? And Luffy's like, okay. And then he hits the ground. All right? Because I feel like Ace worries about Luffy. But at the same time, it's like Ace probably does not want to fight Luffy's battles for him, or he knows how headstrong Luffy is, and so the idea, and it's like, it's kind of part of the pirate code in a sense of, like, if Ace, like, because he could have easily hopped off the back of Scissors and landed with Luffy, and it could have been Ace and Luffy fighting against Crocodile, but it's like, mm, if I do that, then he's not going to realize, he's not going to get stronger. Because Ace has been an accomplished pirate for three years now at this point, and Ace ran into a bunch of really strong opponents, and he's gotten his ass kicked a few times. So I think it's like, Ace's perspective was like, 
if Luffy wants to be on the Grand Line, if he wants to be here, if he wants to eventually defeat the Yonko and get to the New World, he's got to learn how to deal with Logias. Like, he has to learn, because, like, he's going to encounter a Logia at some point. It's going to happen. He's going to have to figure out how to defeat them. So, I think Ace would have just gone with the rest of the Straw Hats on the back of Scissors to Alabarna, and he would have left Luffy there. Now, he might have, you know, given Luffy some extra hints on how to defeat a Logia or something like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'd be like, you have to learn how to defeat a Logia if you want to be King of the Pirates. So, this is, this is the first challenge, all right? So I think it would have played out very similar. Or maybe also Ace could have said something like, Hey, Luffy, even though it might not seem like you can hurt him, every Logia has a weakness. You just have to find it. And maybe Ace would have been smart enough to realize Luffy has the Yuba water around his neck, and so he wouldn't have told him right away, like, Hey, Luffy, splash the water on him and you can hit him. Might not have said that, but he might have said, like, Luffy, you already have everything you need in order to hit him. All right? Good luck, brother. You know, and then it's like, all right, all right, Ace, I'll do that. And so he lands. And then Luffy would have eventually figured out how to use the Yuba water. And he did land a hit on Crocodile, but he was defeated. He was drained of his moisture. He was sucked dry and left to die in the desert. Um, and then that's, of course, where Robin saved him and everything like that. But I think Ace would have been confident in his brother that, like, okay, he can, he can squirm out of any situation. I think he can make it through this, okay? So I think it's just the idea of having confidence in his little brother, right? So now we get to the moment where we arrive at Alubarna and we get to the final battles of this arc, okay? So how would have this gone, okay, if Ace was in the mix uh, against fighting Mr. One, Miss Doublefinger, Mr. Two, Mr. Uh, Four, and Miss Merry Christmas, uh, and then Crocodile himself? How would have this all went down? And also Miss All Sunday as well, Robin as well, because she's still an enemy at this point. Like, how would have all that went? So I like to think at this point that Ace would have... I feel like Ace is... At this point, he knows that, like, all right, the Straw Hats, they, they can't, I can't hold their hands with this. I mean, Ace, if he wanted to, could have went up to Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas and, like, he can! And they would have just gotten fried. And then there, done. But if he would have done that, then Usopp and Chopper would not have had their fight. So I don't think Ace would have done that to, like, rob them of that experience. Because that's what it is being a pirate. You can't just expect strong pirates to show up and hold your hand and defeat every enemy for you. Okay, so there's that. I think also Ace could have defeated Mr. Two Bon Clay very, very easily. Um, the f Miss Doublefinger as well. Ace against Mr. One Daz Bones. That might have been a little bit of a tricky fight. I don't think like a single he can would have been able to take down Mr. One that easily. I think Mr. One being made out of steel would have been able to resist like a he can. Now if Ace like turned up the heat a bit, if he was using like Diane Kai, if he was like throwing the goddamn sun at Mr. One, like that might have been enough to like melt him and defeat him. But I'm just saying like, you know, that would have been a trickier fight. But I don't think Ace would have done that. Here's what I think Ace would have done. This is what I think he would do. Ace would go to have an interaction with Crocodile. All right? He would show up at the palace when, you know, when Vivi is confronting him and everything. He's just going to fly up to the palace and just confront. He's like, hey there. So you're Crocodile. You're Sir Crocodile, huh? I've heard a lot of stories about you from my old man. And Crocodile would just be like, Oh, he would know exactly who Ace was. He'd be like, you're Fire Fist. You're working on his crew. And just like, yeah, yeah, my old man. He's a crazy guy. Heard you guys got into a fight a couple years back. Um, Crocodile fought against Whitebeard. It, I'll tell you exactly when it was. It was right during uh, Corazon's and Law's backstory. Because remember when Law went to go stab Corazon in the junkyard when he was a little kid? That was like 13 years ago, 13, 14 years ago. Corazon was reading a newspaper, and the article that he was reading in the newspaper was the article about Crocodile clashing with Whitebeard. I love you, Oda. I love how all this stuff syncs up. So it was like 13, 14 years ago that Crocodile had this encounter. Crocodile's in his 40s. Obviously, Ace at this point was only 20, and so Ace would have heard about it. And so maybe Crocodile and Ace would fight a little bit. Um, and that would have been a really cool fight to see, to see the sand fighting against fire. And it would have been, like, kind of maybe a stalemate, or maybe Ace wouldn't have been going full throttle against Crocodile, just holding him at bay. And it could have been a really cool scene where it's, it's like, oh, 
I'm just here to kill time, Crocodile. I'm not here to actually defeat you. That's going to be my brother. That's going to be Luffy. And Crocodile would be like, Oh, your brother, I drained him of all the moisture he had, and I left him dead in the desert. And he's just like, No, you didn't. He's going to be coming. In fact, and then he just like looks up, and he's like, Luffy comes riding down on Pell, and he's got the giant water tank, and he turns into Mizu Luffy, and he lands. And he's just like, All right, Ace. I got this now. Round two. I'm going to beat him this time. He's like, All right, Luffy, you have fun with that. And I can see Ace just leaving, and then the fight continues like normal, where Luffy goes into water, Luffy fights against Crocodile, gets defeated the second time, but then comes back and defeats him in the tomb. I can see that fight going exactly the same way. Now, if Luffy straight up died, like if Crocodile, if that fight went a little bit differently and Crocodile was able to straight up kill him, like cut off his head or whatever, then Ace would have been enraged, he would have stepped in, he would have slaughtered Crocodile. He would have burned him into ash. I mean, I, I think if you turn up the heat enough, you can burn sand. I guess you can burn anything if you turn up the heat enough. Um, even fire, as we saw with Ace and Akainu's fight. Um, so, yeah, I, I think at some point, like, if it got to that extreme, Ace would have stepped in and just slaughtered Crocodile. But under normal circumstances, I think he would basically, Crocodile would have fought Luffy like normal. And Ace would have just went off and helped the Straw Hats find uh, the bomb. Um, actually, you know what it probably would have been? I'll tell you exactly how this would have went. Um, maybe Ace would have defeated some of the lower-ranking members of, like, the Billions or the Millions or who cares, like, wherever he did. He was like, you know, Ace, we gotta find the bomb! And Ace is like, alright, let's find the bomb. And he would have just, you know, y he can fly, so he would have used his, his Mara Mara Nomi to, like, survey the town or whatever, like, we gotta find it. Remember that scene where they found the bomb in the clock tower and they didn't have enough time to go up the stairs? So what they did was they had that really cool scene where they, like, you know, Sanji kicked Zoro up into the air and then Zoro used the back of the blades and then Vivi got to the top and then she slashed Mr. Seven and Miss Father's Day. Like, so they, they didn't launch the bomb. It was on a timer, but, like, she defeated them. Instead of that cool scene, I think that would have changed. It would have just been uh, Ace, because Ace can fly. So it would have just been like, the bomb's in the clock tower! We have to get up there! Ace is like, oh, okay, and then just, whoop, just zip right over. Boom! Knock out Mr. Seven and Miss Father's Day. He wouldn't even have to use his Mara Mara powers for that. Just knock them both out. And Ace would have been like, all right, I got the bomb. What do I do now? Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. You know that big dramatic scene that Pell did where Pell had to grab the bomb and he flew up into the atmosphere and it detonated. It was like a nuke that went off and uh, Pell apparently died where he should have died. Let's, let's just be straight up. There was no reason to keep Pell alive. Pell should have died there, okay? He should have died. They built a statue to him. Like, this is the guardian deity of Alabasta. He was Pell. Built a giant statue of him in front of Alubarna. Forever in our hearts. We love you, Pell. But he should have died there. That was a really powerful bomb. It was super powerful. You could even say it was like a nuclear bomb blast without like the radiation or anything like that. It was a very powerful bomb that would have leveled Alubarna. But, Ace is a Logia. <laughs> Ace is a Logia! So, couldn't in theory, Ace have just, oh, okay, it's a bomb? Don't worry, I got this. And just grab the bomb and then just, you know, like, okay, just walk over, he has the bomb, and just like, alright, jet boosters, go! And just lights his legs on fire like a jet engine and just flies way up into the air like a damn rocket, and then the bomb detonates. Boom! But then literally, Ace controls fire, so not even being a Logia, he's a Logia that's like the best suited. Maybe, oh, okay, Mr. Five is not a Logia. Oh, could Mr. Five have survived the bomb blast? Maybe he could have. But like, my point is like, Ace is fire, so he could have flown up, the bomb explodes, he could have like, grab the explosion in the fire and just keep it contained like he's like Fire Lord Ozai or whatever the hell and just been like take the fire and like I don't know, throw it up into the air and you know, like so it like extinguishes from the lack of oxygen or whatever make sure it doesn't hit the town like and then Ace just flies back down he's like alright what next that was easy Luffy done yet <laughs> just like so Pell doesn't have to uh, Pell. so you know what I actually prefer that because Pell, yeah, he doesn't have the emotional moment where he's like, I am the guardian deity of Alabasta. Yeah, he doesn't have that emotional scene, but he survives, but at least it makes sense in this context. And so, 
All right, cool, cool. So there you go. There's Ace's moment, right? All right. So after that, Luffy defeats Crocodile like normal. Gummo Gummo no Storm, you know, 1812 Overture plays or whatever. I don't think it's the 1812 Overture, but it's something like, it's like, da 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 And then he just beats the crap out of Crocodile and then saves Alabasta. Everything's copacetic. Okay, cool. So the Straw Hats, they have their big you know, party at the banquet, and Ace is there, and he's eating the food, and he falls asleep, and he wakes up, and he eats the food, and he falls asleep, and all that good stuff. And now, at the end of the arc, everything still plays out exactly the same way. VV still opts to stay. Uh, Robin still joins. Ooh, Robin interacting with Ace. That would be an interesting one. We haven't really had that in the story. That would have been really cool to see Robin talking to Ace, because Robin knows a lot more about the world, and Ace knows more. You know, he's a member of White but like Robin would know who Ace was. Robin would know like oh you're fire fist ace you're the second in command of the Whitebeard pirates it, it's actually entirely possible we might have heard the name yonko dropped earlier in the story if oda had very well thought of it at that point you know he might have but it's like you know at that point it'd be like oh luffy your brother is um a subordinate of Whitebeard. he's one of the yonko he's one of the strongest pirates in the world so we might have actually found out more of this terminology earlier uh, instead of the end of Al instead of the end of any's lobby it's at the end of alabasta maybe maybe something like that would have happened that would have been really cool but anyway then after ace travels with them to goat island and the rainbow mist and everything like that and fillers uh right after that they end up in uh well they find that salvaged wreck and then they end up in jaya and who's in jaya blackbeard and so holy crap right like imagine luffy and ace and the crew going into that bar and then bellamy's there oh my god ace and bellamy oh dude that would have been so freaking satisfying to see Ace just punch out or, like, light Bellamy on fire. Or, oh, oh, okay, what about this? What, it would have been really funny if, like, it still plays out the same way where Bellamy laughs at Luffy. He's like, Sky Island, you're a freaking moron! There's no such thing! And so Ace is there, and, you know, Ace and Luffy are kind of, they're kind of the same kind of, like, you know, philosophy on this, same as Shanks. You know, I don't think Ace would have gotten into the bar fight either, and, in fact, he probably would have let himself get hit a few times anyway. But as they were all walking out of the bar, like, as, you know, the scene where, like, Zoro and Luffy and, and Nami are walking out of the bar like they did after the fight was over, and Bellamy's, like, laughing at them, it'd be really funny if Ace just, like uses his marimara no to like light bellamy's leg on fire like just not enough to hurt him just like he lights his foot on fire and he's just like ha ha sky island a bunch of idiots they're stupid oh crap oh man what oh man who lit my leg on fire you know like that would have been pretty funny as just like a last bit of comeuppance like you're an idiot you know whatever okay but then you know there's also blackbeard there right and that, i guess okay i guess that wouldn't have happened that way because Blackbeard was in the tavern first because that was the first interaction because Luffy was sitting there eating the pie and then Blackbeard was there right next to him and then it was after that exchange that Bellamy you know actually started his fight with Luffy so I guess that wouldn't have happened because as as long as Ace walks into that bar he's going to immediately know who you know who Blackbeard is it's like that's Teach sitting right there holy shit so I want you to picture that they're, they arrive on Jaya. It's like, oh, I wonder if Blackbeard will be on this island. They walk into the bar, and immediately, Ace's face just... Holy crap. He's right there. And Luffy and Nami and Zoro and Sanji and Usopp and everybody are just like, what, what, who? Teach! And then, like, Blackbeard turns around, and he's, like, eating his pie or whatever. He's like, oh, man, this is good pie. Teach! Oh, who's that? Oh, crap, stop! It's just like, if Ace was smart, he would just, like, Blast a freaking he can right at Blackbeard right when he was sitting at the bar and just like lights him on fire, knocks him through the wall. That's Terry's bar. Terry was the bartender, the dude with the epic mustache. He's just like, What are you doing to my bar? This was my bar. I just fixed that. It is like, it is like, Don't worry. I can pay for it. It's fine. I got a score to settle. And so, like, Blackbeard lands on the other side of the bar. He's outside. And all the other pirates are looking around like, what's happening? And just like, oh, say, ha, ha, ha. oh, hey there, Commander Ace. It's been a while. Ace walks through the freaking burned out hole, and he's just like, all right, I didn't think I'd run into you this fast, but you and I have a score to settle, Teach. We're doing this right now. And he's like, you got to pay for what you did to Thatch. And he's like, ha, ha, say, ha, ha. Well, you know what they say, you know, if uh, somebody finds a devil fruit, you gotta kill him and steal it, right? That's just how it goes. Oh my god, so, I can't really see any reason why, 
I mean, I, I mean, we can maybe do the anime bullshit where it's like, we're gonna go fight somewhere else. But I really don't think that Ace would do that. I think it'd be like, no, no, I found you. I've been looking for you for weeks, months maybe. Uh, I've been looking for you. I found you. You're going down, right? You're going downtown right here. And then they just start fighting, like, right there outside the bar. And Blackbeard starts whipping out his Yami Yami no Me power, starts using Black Vortex. But... The Straw Hats are also there. I guess Bellamy and his crew are there as well, but I don't think they would get involved. I think they would just be like, holy shit, all right, let's get out of here. That's Fire Fist Ace, and that guy has some weird black hole powers and gravity manipulation. Let's get the let's get the hell out of Dodge, right? So I think Bellamy and Sarkis and everybody would just leave. You know, So maybe the bar fight doesn't even happen. Terry's there just like, oh, my bar, please. You know, and so, but what would the Straw Hats do? I, I imagine... Luffy, I mean, imagine like Zoro and Sanji would be like, Luffy, are we going to go help your brother? And, and just like how I think that how it would go down with Ace letting Luffy fight Crocodile, I think Luffy would let Ace fight Blackbeard because they that's the way it is. That's like the pirate code. That's like, no, that's his fight. It, it would be the same thing of like Zoro fighting Mihawk and then Luffy interfering with that. Right? Like, it's the same kind of thing. Like, Luffy would not interfere with Zoro fighting Mihawk because that's not his place. That's not his fight. Same thing with this. Because Luffy, Ace did explain in Volume 18 why he was going after Blackbeard. He says, he killed one of my crewmates. I'm his superior. It's my job to bring him in. So Luffy would know that and he would stop. If Zoro and Sanji tried to jump in, Luffy would stop them. He'd be like, no. No, this is not our fight. This is Ace's fight. Remember what he said. That man killed one of Ace's friends. He has to solve this, not us. And so, I trust my brother. And so, essentially, you would probably have the... Because the thing is, there's really not any difference between Blackbeard at Jaya versus Blackbeard at uh, Bonaro Island. It's not like he gets ridiculously stronger at that point. I mean, he might learn a little bit more about how to use his Yami Yami no Mi, but remember, Blackbeard had been researching the Yami Yami no Mi for years, and so, before he got it, so he knew exactly how it worked. So, yeah, I mean, you got the rest of Blackbeard's crew there as well, like Burgess and Lafitte and everything, but they did not help Blackbeard fight against Ace. I mean, they tried. Van Auger tried to shoot a hole through uh, Ace, and it didn't work. Um, um, you know, he didn't have, he, he tried to shoot a hole through Ace, but only Akainu, Akainu can do that, right? So they wouldn't get involved. Blackbeard would say the same thing he said at Bonaro Island. He's like, it's like, Augur, Burgess, this guy's way too out of your league. You know, you got to stay back, okay? So it would just be Blackbeard versus Ace, but instead of Bonaro Island, it'd be at Jaya. It would be at Mock Town. Holy crap. Can you imagine on the edge of Mock Town, like Mont Blanc Cricket, he's like in his house, like making dinner, and he just sees fire pillars and black holes, like tendrils opening up, and he's just like, Yeah, I'm not messing with that tonight. <laughs> it's just like, it's just like, it's so crazy this is going on, right? So, um, if the fight continues, though, if it goes, it would go pretty much the exact same way it would go at Bonaro Island. Maybe at some point, maybe Luffy would see Ace being defeated, and Luffy would be like, Ace, and Luffy would, I mean, Ace would just be like, Luffy, stay back, it's fine, I got this, don't worry, trust in your brother, and Luffy would be like, okay, alright, I will, and so that's the moment where, you know, Ace pulls out his, you know, flame, great flame commandment, you know, flame emperor, and then Blackbeard's like, the sun and darkness, ha 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 and he creates the giant black hole, and they throw to each other, and just boom, big epic clash, and bombastic explosion, um, completely nukes all of Mock Town, it's just wiped off the map, but at the end of it, Ace is rendered unconscious, Blackbeard grabs him, and then pulls him, and then takes him away, so what would happen then? Because Luffy obviously would not take that standing down, all right? So I think there's no way to get around it at that point when Blackbeard is dragging Ace away. Luffy and his crew would fight against Blackbeard's crew to get Ace back. Regardless of what abilities they saw him utilize, regardless of how terrifying it is, they would see firsthand Blackbeard has the ability to uh, negate devil fruit powers. They'd be, he, they would see that, and so Luffy would learn about that pretty quickly. But also, they wouldn't just let him go. They wouldn't just let them take Ace away. It was like They wouldn't do that. So it'd be like, alright, we're doing this. And so it would be 
you know, okay, so at that point, they didn't have Shiryu or whatever. So, so Van Arger would go up against Usopp. Usopp would be like, you know, take care of the sniper, dude. And then you'd have uh, Burgess maybe go up against Zoro and Sanji. And then who else? Uh, Doc Q and Stronger. Maybe Chopper could take care of them. And Lafitte, maybe like Nami could go up against Robin. And La Nami could go up against Lafitte or whatever. And then Luffy's just like, you know, give me back my brother! And like, how would that go? How would that go? Well... I'll tell you how that would go in the second part of this video, which I just decided just now because this video is very long already. We're already 50 minutes into this. I'll have to cut some of this out, but whatever. Part two of the video, how this fight would go. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Teching 101, Barry Ace. Later! Comment down below on how you think it would go.